Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to do another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user Maggie in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. But without further ado, let's hop straight into the action. So their system is called the Aether system. So let's go ahead and go to Workshop, should be ready for us to go. Where are we? The Aether system, there he is, right. Let's see what we have got here. Okay, right, here we go. Oh, right, Aether. Is a large star system located near the other side of the Milky Way from the Sun. Okay, so straight into the action. So the star itself, as we can see, a little more powerful than the Sun. Luminosity, temperature, larger, radius, mass. Okay, looking good. All right, so first of the planets. Let's go straight into this. So here we are. Zagreus. An Earth-sized, atmosphereless, and moonless planet. It is the innermost planet and is not tidy locked thanks to its neighbouring planet. Lovely stuff. There he is. Nice. Next up, we've got Macaria. Put it here. A Saturn-sized gas giant with a high meteorology, giving it a powerful magnetic field that can overcome strong solar wind. It features two tightly packed moons. So that's up, we've got. Uh, Uberlus, fantastic mine outpost. Thinks it's high metal content and small size. There you go. And then Kronos, an atmosphere moon which is about the size of Mercury. Nice. Next up, we have got the Metalloid Belt, I like the name. A thin belt of heavy metal asteroids that separate the deep planets from the inner planets. It has a single dwarf planet, Feria, orbiting in it, which is somewhere. Where is it? Planet Feria. That's the only orbit I see in there. What's this? Let's see a description for this one. I say, but there it is. Okay. So next up we've got Aelius. Aeolus. Aeolus. A hot super terror with over seven bar of atmosphere pressure. Nothing compared to Venus, but not to be overlooked. It recently had an asteroid impact from Metalloid Belt. It has a single moon, which is here. Uros. A Mercury-sized moon with an atmosphere similar pressure to Earth's. It's the more forgiving moon of Alias. Okay. It only has one moon. Okay. Or more forgiving twin, I should say. Not moon. Next up, we've got uh, Nepheli. Over here. So, where are we? A planet that was comparable to Earth in the system's early days. However, now the oceans have completely boiled off. Now it is a steam world. It features two moons. So next we've got Hermes. So there's a, a moon with an interesting coloration, to say the least. People jokingly call it the cheese moon. And then we've got over here, the second moon. Right here, an asteroid. The captured gravity asteroid which orbits Hermes. Okay, nice. Cool. Okay, next up we're heading to this one. Achilles there. A super terror which looked promising, but scientists later found out this planet was actually one of the most toxic places in the entire system. Its two moons are a better vacation spot if you want to live. Okay. So we've got Nynx. Moon orbits close to have stolen some of the atmosphere, so they'd find the surface. It's close enough to be inside the planet's magnetic sphere. And then we have Nike. Crater moon that formed from the same collision that formed Nynx. Nike simply getting more of a mass. Over here. There it is. Nice. Next up we've got Athena. A supercompatible planet with slightly more oxygen than on Earth, having a wide selection of biomes and life. But the most fascinating part of the planet is that its life has some DNA or uh, has the same DNA as Earth DNA, supporting the theory that life Earth life came from directed pans per year rather than abiogenesis. Abiogenesis? Abungi abogenesis. Abiogenesis. <laughs> I am terrible with some saying some of these. Uh, the planet's views from the surface are some of the best views ever seen, especially from its three moons. It's a nice two tone atmosphere as well, if you look carefully, you can see it. It looks good. Next up, we've got Apollo. Rather uninteresting asteroid. We got this one. Recent collisions have made this large moon a fairly nice place to visit. If you brought an auction master, conditions would be similar to being on top of a mountain on Earth. Nice. We got Selene. 
This place is similar to Earth's moon that has cliffs and canyons and less regolf from the surface. Okay. Nice. Next up, we're heading to Aphrodite, which is here. The beautifully coloured ice giant. Nice. That sits a bit too far from the Hattle Zone. It's theorised to have a supercritical sublimation beneath the thick atmosphere and has some interesting moons. So we've got Phobos here. Ooh. People call this moon a super Phobos thanks to its size, colour, and name. Nice. Harmonia. Two tone atmosphere on this one as well. Looking good. A world similar to Mars, but due to its parent planet, it it's able to keep a thicker atmosphere. The sunsets are said to be an inspiring sight. We've got Demos. Just like Demos, maybe? At first glance, this moon seems rather bland, but close inspection hints that this moon had an interesting and violent past. Okay. Next up, we've got the G asteroid belt. Similar to Earth's asteroid belt, it's composed mostly rocky materials and occasional comet, and houses two dwarf planets. So we've got was it Skiller and Charabis? Which are these two? Oh, well, they're very close. Binary. Binary dwarf planet system of almost the same mass. Nice. And then we have this other one, Hestia, which is this one. A dwarf planet with two different rings of wide separation. It's likely they have different origins. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice. Now we're moving on to Hera. Which is this purple one. Here it is. A beautiful super Jupiter with a very low density and large ring system and six unique moons. Got Lamy over here. It's made like a gap in the moons as well. A very large lumpy asteroid, perhaps a fragment of an impact, has stunning views. Stunning views. That's not all the look see here. There you go. Oh yeah, looking good. Nice. Lovely stuff. Let's have a little look close, maybe here. There is it. Oh, I can't even see him. Where'd he go? Where'd he, where'd he, where's he gone? Let's land it there. Gas giant should be on the right. There he is. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like. Looking good. Next up, we got. Herb here. Heeb. Herb. Hebe. One of the smaller round moons in the system. Tidal forces have led it to spew vast amounts of ice. Nice. This one here. Two tone atmosphere on it as well. A cold and very red moon. The atmosphere is quite thick, so good luck visiting it and returning. Maybe it's like Titan. And we got Pelias. Quite an ugly moon. The brown highlands are particular, though. Okay. Yep. Then we got Arge, a captured planet with ammonia lakes. And that's, and hang on, that's, well that's, uh, this is Atlanta. Atalanta. An ice moon with a small but visible ring system. The view from the surface is beautiful. It looks good actually, doesn't it? Let's see if we can spot those rings. You can see the uh, planet's rings there. The asteroid belts. I can't really see the moon's rings though. They're kind of lost in the uh, depths there, but they are probably there somewhere. It's a very it's a very thin ring as well, it makes it quite hard to spot, but yeah, they are there. Nice. Next up we got Ard, which is the last one, which is here. A catch a planet of ammonia lakes, not suitable for humans, but may survive, extreme of our life forms could survive. Okay. Nice. Next up we got Hades. Some Greek god names in here. A mega terror of surprisingly low atmosphere pressure. It's theorised it was once an ice giant. What happened to it? And we've got Arion here. A moon with a thick poison atmosphere and a super ocean made of ammonia. That's quite a nice combo of colours in there. The red, the green, the blue. Then we've got Rhodos here. A moon with a tenth of lunar's mass. The atmosphere is thicker than Mars, but polar opposite of Hades. Nice. So next up we've got Zeus, the dominant gas giant. That's probably the right name to give it. It's the dominant one. There you go, the top one. Of the system system, 11 Jupiter masses. It has influences the entire system and has acquired many moons and captured planet. So we've got Herfa 
Aestus. The moon close to being torn apart, and as a result, the mantle and this crust is complete, constantly mixed. The surface has been covered in sulfur. So that's like your IO equivalent. So next up, we've got Folgandros. A hassle moon that could have had life had it hadn't been stabilized by the radiation belt. Ah, there he is. Okay. Then we got this one. Kion. Uh, a moon that hasn't been tidally heated as much. As a result, it's colder but less radioactive. Okay. We've got this one. Coos here. Ah, very green. Nice. Looks good. A moon that uh, was it an exotic moon with an intelligent civilization living on it. Its distance, thick atmosphere, magnetic sphere protects it against the radiation belt. We got this one. Euclidea, a moon akin to Mars that formed too far away to gain a thick atmosphere. Um, then we have Arcas. When passing through Zeus' magnetic field, it received the least radiation in the entire system. And then we've got Metis over here. Captured ice giant, huh? Um, with cold oxygen on it, and two sub-moons that mostly speak for themselves. So here they are. So got one there, and then there's a second one here. It's really far away from Zeus, you can barely see it in the distance now. It's quite small. Okay. Next up, we have got this one, Yuri Midden. A super Neptune that wants to be a gas giant but lacks the mass to fully transform. Prometheus, a moon with enough tidal force to spew a bit of sulfur but not enough to cover the whole surface. There it is. This moon had some tall ridges and cliffs, and scientists aren't exactly sure why. This is Periboia. Stinks here. A moon with thin night shin atmosphere. The surface is almost constant blizzard and harsh place to travel. And then Saeus here. A colourless grey moon, not a lot going for it. Nice. Then we got Leto. A chlorine ice shine free with uh, a chlorine ice giant free interest in major moons. So we've got Delos, a small icy moon on a polar orbit, and its surface looks familiar. Interesting. Not sure what texture it is. What texture is it? Planet 11 and Venus. Okay. Venus texture. Where have we got Asteria. A somewhat smooth moon with a thick atmosphere and liquid nitrogen oceans. The gravity is low and makes for a cool vacation spot as long as you don't mind freezing to death in seconds. And then we've got this one here. No description for this one. Le Lectanos. Uh, okay. Next up, we're heading to. Where is that? Oh, there's still quite a lot, wasn't there? Uh, Creus, which is here. So dwarf planets now. There he is. The largest dwarf planet in the system is one with many moons and a thin atmosphere. So we've got Eurybia. The moon that formed alongside Grius. And large enough to almost make a binary. Then we got this one. Perseus. A moon we've made mostly like the ice. Maybe it has subglacial life. We've got this one here. Astreus. A moon with some interesting mineral deposits on the surface. Got hip hip on toes. Moon with very interesting coloration. Okay. We've got Hydra, comet moon, nothing much to say. It's on the edge there. Okay. So next up we've got Demeter. Over here. A dwarf planet with a very large ring system compared to its size. The view from the planet surface is stunning. You can see the ring. Yeah, I can see them this time. They're there. There you go. You can see the rings going all the way around. You can see the asteroid belt as well. From the enhanced view mode, there's the rings. Nicely done. Looking good. And you got this one. Persephone over here. 
Tiny mice move enough and incline to see the whole ring system. Oh, uh, incline. Nice. That's always cool. Have a look around. Let's have a look up. There he is. Hey. Looking good. Awesome stuff. Cool. All right. Then we have Oria over here. Dwarf planet with tall mountains and flatlands. If you want to feel alone, this is where to go. Right, now we're moving even further out. We've got Aeon. A brown dwarf star. Ah. The entire system can fit within R136A1. There he is. Brown dwarf. He's actually used a proper star for it as well. A brown dwarf. Yep. So we've got orbs in this. Hemera. An earth like planet with some large lakes and rivers. It has unicellular life. You see, I wish they made brown dwarfs actually admit light like this, and you could actually have like legitimate systems around them. So I used to make brown dwarfs like this a long time ago. Um, we've got Celtus. An icy planet with subglacial oceans. Sometimes cracks in the ice crust will bring these oceans to the surface for a short time. We've got Fanathos over here. A toxic venus like planet with greenhouse gases making its temperatures somewhat hazardous. It's not a nice place to take off your helmet though. Ooh. And lastly, we've got uh, Cositus over here. The dominant planet of this system is subcarbonate with a vast superation of carbon dioxide, and it's the only planet in the system to have a moon below it. Below it? It's got an accent on the end there. There it is. Nice. And there's one more object further out as well. It didn't have a description, which is this one. Eos here. There it is. The undescriptive planet. So there you go. That does it for the Aether system. So what do you guys think of that? Quite a nice system. I like the customization. There it is. I really like that view of that Zeus. I think it's Zeus. The one with that cool moon view in it. Which one was it? It was one of the... Is it Hera, wasn't it? Is it this one? That was it, yeah. This is the one with a cool view, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's good, that was. Let's land in there. That's cool. I like that. So there we are. What do you think of that? Alright, let me click off and go into the screen mode because there's objects everywhere i can't double click out of it but there it is so let me know what you think down below in the description of this system guys and yeah again a massive thank you to the creator of this system maggie for sending this system let us know what you think down below in the comments let's even go for 100 likes on today's video as well guys helps in the journey to 40,000 subscribers as we are very very close now really really appreciate all the uh, support absolutely means the world and with that all said everybody make sure you have a great day see you in the next one and goodbye